What's up, Magic players? It's Doyle, your host here on Doyle Prime MTG. Today, I've got another deck build from Commander Legends just for you. Around me of the Dead Tide may be uncommon, but this feisty fish can pack a punch with a low price tag. Forests, islands, mountains, plains, and swamps. The multiverse is all that is, or ever was, or ever will be. There is a tingling in the spine faint sensation, as if a distant memory of walking from plane to plane. Our lives have been forever changed, as if by magic. Embark with me on this journey to eternity. Experience the true power of mind over matter, as we ignite your spark and traverse into the magic multiverse. This deck list is easily made for $150 in value if you buy everything from scratch. However, this list does include a $150 land base also. That being said, it would be easy to run this commander on a budget, so I did include some of those budget replacement options in the maybe board, as well as one card that was just too expensive for me to even consider for this list. Around Me of the Dead Tide costs 1 black blue for a 1-4 merfolk wizard with... Tap. Exile cards from your graveyard equal to the number of opponents you have. Target creature in your graveyard gains Encore. The Encore cost is equal to its mana cost. This means that when we activate that Encore ability, we'll exile the creature card from our graveyard to create a token copy of it for each opponent that we have. Those tokens gain haste, each must attack a different opponent, and we must sacrifice them at the beginning of the next end step. The goal of this deck is to fill our graveyard and use Around Me to Encore multiple creatures, creating big board states, massive card advantage, or even an endgame. Of course, we will again build in the order that we play the game. Ramp, draw, control, and finish. Let us begin with the evergreen ramp that we don't need our commander in play to use. First up is a soul ring, which costs 1 and taps for 2. Next up, we have an arcane signet, which costs 2 and taps for either of our colors. Demir signet costs 2 and nets us 1 mana, and helps us fix our colors. Fractured Power Stone costs 2 and taps for a colorless. Talisman of Dominance costs 2 and can tap for either of our colors. Next, we have a couple of creatures that ramp us and feed us fuel, with Milliken and Deranged Assistant. Each of these costs 2 total mana and taps for a colorless while milling us a card. Also, we have a bit of land ramp with Wayfarer's Bobble, which costs 1, but we can pay 2 tap and sack it to tutor a basic land to the field tapped. And also Solemn Simulacrum, which costs 4 for a creature that enters the battlefield to allow us to tutor a basic land to our field tapped, and also draws us a card when it dies. We also have some conditional ramp, starting with Ashnod's Altar, which costs 3, but allows us to sacrifice a creature for 2 colorless mana. Embalmer's Tools costs 2 mana and will make our Embalm abilities cheaper, saving us mana in the long run. Nykthos, Shrine to Nyx, also helps us ramp in a legendary way. As long as we have devotion of 4 or more to a color, this will provide us with loads of extra mana. Priest of Gix doesn't ramp us on its own, but when used as an Encore ability, it can generate black 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 for each opponent that we control, helping ramp us to cast multiple Encore abilities within a single turn. Pitiless Plunderer costs 3 and a black for a creature that makes treasure tokens whenever one of our creatures dies. Cloud of Fairies costs 1 and a blue for a creature that untaps up to 2 lands on entering the battlefield. Peregrine Drake also helps us in a similar way, since when it enters the battlefield, it untaps up to 5 target lands. If we have lands to tap for multiple mana, and or we encore this with Around Me, it can generate us loads and loads of mana. And last but not least, we have a ritual with Songs of the Damned. Costing a black, it gives us a black for each creature card in our graveyard. Next up, let's take a look at some evergreen card draw, keeping our hand full of opportunities. Starting with Old Reliable, Skull Clamp costs 1 for an equipment that has when a crypt creature dies, draw 2 cards, and equip 1. Floating Dream Zubera costs 1 and a blue for a creature that will draw us a card when it dies for each Zubera that died this turn. Undead Augur costs Black Black for a zombie that will draw us a card and cause us to lose a life for each time it or another zombie died. Each of these will cantrip on a sacrifice, but when using Aramu's Encore ability, they will each draw us 9 cards when we sacrifice the tokens at our end step. We'll see a lot of this type of interaction. Watcher for Tomorrow costs 1 and a blue for a creature that ETBs to hide away one of the top 4 cards of our library, and we get that card in our hand should the creature leave the battlefield. Trophy Mage costs 2 and a blue for a creature that ETBs to tutor for an artifact with CMC equal to 2. Impaler Shrike costs 2 blue blue for a flying creature that we can sacrifice to draw 3 cards if it dealt combat damage to an opponent. 
Mold Drifter costs three blue blue for a creature that ETBs to draw us two cards, or we can evoke it for two and a blue. Factor Fiction draws us cards and dumps cards into our graveyard for three and a blue. We also have the chance to net draw cards with Windfall for two and a blue. Moving forward, since we have direct access to creature cards in our graveyard and we need to exile cards from the yard to encore them, Self Mill is going to act kind of as both ramp and card draw in its own way. So let's take a look at the cards that mill us and let us loot, generating us card selection and gas for later explosiveness. First up, we have a Hedron Crab. For blue, it lets us mill three on a landfall trigger. We don't use the other crab because it doesn't let us mill ourselves. Next up, we have Stitcher Supplier. For black, it mills us three on both an ETB trigger and a dies trigger, performing exceptionally well in an encore. Visera Seer is going to give us a free sack outlet and let us scry to keep the top of our deck primed for whatever situation we are in. Halamar Excavator is a great encore target. If we have the usual three opponents, this can slam 27 cards into our graveyard for later encore activations. Merfolk Looter costs one and a blue for a creature that taps to let us draw a card and discard a card. Altar of Dementia is going to give us a free sack outlet and let us mill as a reward. Mesmeric Orb is wild, milling us a card for each time one of our permanents untaps. This also helps fill our opponent's graveyards for interaction with some other cards in this deck. Careful Study is a lovely little spell. For just a blue, we can draw two, then discard two. Frantic Search will do the same for two and a blue, but it will also untap up to three target lands. Search for Escanta costs one and a blue for an enchantment that helps fill our graveyard and flips to a land when our yard is big enough. Court of Cunning helps mill ourselves as well as introduces the Monarch mechanic to the game. Finally, Monastery Siege will let us loot at our draw step in addition to our usual draw. For our control section, let's begin with controlling our board. Tortured Existence is an enchantment for a black mana that lets us pay one black to swap a creature in our hand for one in our graveyard. Buried Alive lets us tutor three creatures and place them directly into our graveyard for a later encore. Dread Return also helps us gain card advantage by returning a creature from our grave to the battlefield. We can also sack three creatures for its flashback cost. Victimize lets us sacrifice one creature to bring back two from the grave in its place. Carrion Feeder is a cheap and efficient sack outlet for dumping creatures from our field into our yard. Academy Ruins is a land that lets us put artifact cards from our grave back on top of our library. Castle Vantress and Castle Lockthwain each help us select and draw cards, keeping our game plan in motion. Next up we have some cards that will help us untap around me with Afedo Alchemist, Corridor Monitor, Vizier of Tumbling Sands, Mage Rite Stone, and Thousand Year Elixir. The Elixir will also let Araumi be activated as though she has haste. These cards will allow us to activate Araumi multiple times in a single turn, causing catastrophic calamity. If it is in your budget, Minamo School at Water's Edge is a great way to untap Araumi, but it is not entirely necessary. Also, we are going to include a couple of 2CMC cards that will allow us to keep the creature tokens that we generate if we so choose, with Sundial of the Infinite and Teferi's Veil. Sundial lets us end our turn at instant speed, causing us to not be required to sacrifice those tokens at the end step. And the Veil allows our creatures to phase out at the end of combat should they survive. This means that they will not technically exist until our next untap step. To control our opponent's boards, let's start off with Burglar Rat, which costs one and a black for a creature that ETBs to cause each opponent to discard a card. Remember, with Encore, that's three rats and three discards from each opponent. Arcane Denial is a fancy little counterspell that cantrips and works very well with our tempo. Next up, we have four creatures that will each cause a player to make a sacrifice with Demon's Disciple, Fleshbag Marauder, Merciless Executioner, and Plague Crafter. Vindictive Lich is similarly devastating. Most of the time, we want to encore this, especially if we have three or more opponents. We can just dole out these punishments to our heart's content. Finally, for control, let's take a little more literal interpretation, with Kaiga the Tide Star. When she dies, we gain control of a creature and opponent controls, so let's freshen her up for her encore. Finally, we have a few ways to close out the game. To kick this off, let's go big, with Sepulchral Primordial. On ETB, it gives us a creature from each opponent's graveyards, but with the encore, we get three creatures from each of our opponent's graveyards. Reform doesn't look big, but on an Encore, we get three copies of a worm that replaces itself with a bigger creature each time it dies, until it becomes a 9-9 Kraken. These things can surely be a threat. Next up, we have two ally creatures that will deal some real damage, with Colostria Healer and Zulaport Cutthroat. 
Each of these creatures when encored will drain each opponent for 9 life, and we will gain that much life. Though, if we were to encore them together, each opponent could lose up to 36 life while we gain 36. Similarly, we can include Sir Conrad the Grim, who pings each opponent for one each time any creature dies, or is milled into the graveyard, or is removed from our graveyard. Clearly, this will be a bomb in this deck, as these are all things that we're constantly doing. The best way to encore twice is through Illusionist Bracers. An equipment that costs 2 and has equipped 3, and whenever an activated ability of equipped creature is activated, if it isn't a mana ability, copy that ability and you may choose new targets for the copy. This allows us to get twice the Encore targets with just a single activation. Another big bomb in this deck is Massacre Worm. For 3 black black black, not only does this give all of our opponent's creatures minus 2 minus 2 until end of turn, but it also causes all of our opponents to lose 2 life for each creature they control when it dies. On an encore, that's minus 6 minus 6 to our opponent's fields, and 6 life for each creature that dies. And last, but most certainly not least, in fact, the biggest of bombs in this deck, we have Gary. Yes, Gray Merchant of Asphodel is fierce in this deck. At its base, with just around me on the board, we can encore this bad boy, giving us usually three copies of itself. In this particular case, that would be seven devotion to black, causing each opponent to lose 21 life while we gain 63 life. I don't even want to do the math for when we also encore a massacre worm earlier in the same turn. This can all be done with basic lands. But for consistency, it is helpful to include the following utility lands. Glasspool Mimic can be played as a clone if we have enough lands. Baron Moor and Lonely Sandbar help to fill our graveyard with a cycling ability. You can also, budget permitting, include a Phyrexian Tower to take advantage of our doomed Encore tokens. The rest of the lands are basic lands and some color fixing lands, whichever fit into your budget. Of course, I have included the ones that I use in the deck list in the description. And that about wraps it up for this deck tech. I hope you enjoyed the video. You'll find the link to the full deck list on architect.com in the description, complete with a maybe board. Let me know in the comments below if you would take this deck in a different direction, or if there are any key includes that I missed. Cheers, and happy casting. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to hit that like button, and also share it with your friends. If you want to see more videos like these, or hear me ramble about how to navigate this magic multiverse, go ahead and click that subscribe button to stay up to date on the latest from me, Doyle Prime, and the happenings throughout Magic the Gathering. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next video.